So I wanted to talk about cubital tunnel because I think as therapists, we could do a better job on our rehab post-surgical or even pre-surgery um, to possibly prevent some of the issues that we're having, maybe even influence some of the problems that are occurring with the Lacerda syndrome, because I think the mechanism or the mechanical fault that is occurring is the same in both scenarios. But we'll talk about cubital tunnel first. So this is essentially where the, the arm should be balanced or the muscle structure should be balanced so the alignment is correct. But in everyday life, people you know, are at a keyboard all day long, they're uh, resting their arms in pronation. So eventually what happens is kind of the arm twists around. So essentially twists around a little bit on the forearm. And then when that also happens, when people have their arm in abduction for extended periods of time over years and years, then we start to not just have this rotational problem, but kind of a lateral kind of shift um, towards that radial side as the arm kind of twists around into pronation. So what does that mean in the way of muscle imbalance? That means that we have a um, muscle called brachialis kind of inserts right here. And then we also have, uh, we'll do it in blue. We also have bicep, um, and brachialis is kind of underneath bicep. Bicep is over here and inserts just a little bit distal to the radial head. So we have two major muscles right here. If you look at your anatomy books, the insertion of this muscle, the brachialis, let me write this down. This is brachialis, alis, has a much larger insertion than bicep. So this is bicep. Um, and then what's interesting is we also have bicep aponeurosis. It kind of comes over here. And a lot of times you'll see kind of a little indent in the arm right there. So we've all these structures are nice and balanced and we don't want to leave out brachioradialis because he is a key player in this. Okay. So all the structures are balanced. We have enconius in the back. We have tricep. We'll just do the front muscles right here. But if everything's balanced, then the alignment should stay right. So I think over time, what we're seeing is an imbalance on some of these muscles. So where's my green one? So now when this shifts over and, and kind of at a diagonal in this valgus angle, what we end up having is a kind of a mechanical fault of the elbow and you get more of a gapping on this side and a shortening on this side as this translates a little bit this way. So that puts strain on the muscles that are inserting right in these locations like the finger flexors, um, the pronator, anything that comes through here, FCU in this location. So this gapping elbow is now creating a tractional problem on the ulnar nerve that's kind of running down through here. And then when we add a lot of wrist motion, especially if people are playing, playing sport and they're going, you know, with extreme wrist extension or extreme wrist flexion, like in golf or tennis with kind of a whipping motion, now we've got a big, large valgus angle, especially in golf or tennis with a lot of topspin. Um, so we've got a gapping angle, we've got a whole lot of rotation, we've got an ulnar nerve on traction, and then eventually we have kind of a muscle imbalance. So it's pretty common in everyday people, but it's also common in sport. So now we have a brachialis who's actually insufficient because it's too long, okay? And it's not actually doing its job. Then we have a really happy brachioradialis right here. Now he's a little bit short and he's maintaining that valgus angle. He's kind of keeping the arm over this way. And then as that occurs, then bicep starts to create more tension because he's going to have an angle of pull, which will be up this way, which will keep that twist in the arm. And then that also will traction that bicep aponeurosis even more. Then we add one more main player in here. I feel like got another color. And we've got, it's a little bit hectic, but we've got pronator right here. So right there would be our Lacertus location, Lacertus syndrome. Can check with our wallet doctors who are brilliant at identifying this and releasing this. But from a therapist perspective, if we focus our treatment on trying to correct this, bring this forearm back and then diagonally back up by strengthening brachialis and then lengthening. So we want to strengthen him. We want to lengthen brachioradialis. We want to restore the length of that pronator and we can't forget Anconius, he's in the back and triceps. So triceps job is going to be kind of re-approximate that posterior um, 
uh, Lecranon. And Anconius, we need him to kind of relax so we can kind of bring this arm back around out of this twisted position and back. So essentially, if you want to strengthen this muscle, kind of lengthen out bicep, lengthen out brachioradialis, stretch out Anconius, and really work on getting these muscles um, kind of active on that medial side, we'll have less traction on that ulnar nerve and eventually, hopefully, less traction on the median nerve, right, where the Lacertus is occurring. And in a, give me a minute, I'll write down which muscles I do in what order to strengthen these. The muscle orders I do, and I base this a lot on anatomy trains. Anatomy trains, if you're not familiar with it, it's great information. And what it kind of says is the fascial lines, certain muscles linked to certain muscles. So when I am strengthening my first group of muscles would be brachialis the alus plus tricep, because I wanna restore that medial elbow, but I need to get tricep active to kind of get us back in that joint space. Then my next group of muscles that I target, a pec major, coralis major, and lats, okay? I put those next in the grouping because again, they are on the same fascial pathway. I'm going to do uh, somewhere in the here, not necessarily in this order, but I'm gonna look closer at Terry's major because he will be short and serratus. I'm kind of adding those. They kind of go in that order. I'm a little bit late on the finger flexes, flexes and pronators. I don't wanna do those first, pronators, because if that medial elbow is gapping and I start activating these muscles, then that's gonna kind of pinch that on the nerve. So I need to restore the elbow position before I start on those, even though research would kind of show that this is how you restore medial elbow. I would kind of challenge that a little bit. I would stretch out, let's see if we've got any more space. I would lengthen and stretch out bicep for sure. Um, because he's gonna take that arm and roll it in and twist it up. And especially if you have an insuffic insufficient brachialis, then bicep is gonna kind of step in. And I would lengthen brachioradialis for sure. That is a key player in this. You can't really get this uh, elbow restored if you've got a brachial uh, brachioradialis literally shifting you laterally into an, a kind of a valgus angle like this. There's your little fingers right there, okay? So this is kind of the order, this is not, uh, the only way to strengthen this, but I would do all internal rotators first before external rotators. Because if you do your external rotators first, you're gonna keep gapping that elbow. So a lot of our exercise programs, especially for baseball players, focus on external rotation. But I would challenge that thought that if you have a Tommy John's problem or you have something related to the medial elbow, you don't wanna increase that valgus angle by doing external rotation. You wanna close in this by doing internal rotation. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Um, this is how we treat it. This is how it gets better. Thanks.